Hello, I'm Alistair Mitchell Baker, and uh, this is the second in the series uh, Healthy Healing. It's the second talk to equip and activate churches in growing in healing. And today we're going to be focusing on how we might grow, uh, how we might uh, use words of knowledge in particular for that. This is part of uh, Yinka Oyakan's uh, presidential year and his call to evangelism across Baptist churches. Um, I like to think of um, words of knowledge as turbocharging healing and uh, I want to get into that but just a reminder first of all a bit of what we covered last time. Um, Mark's gospel ends as you know with this uh, call from Jesus that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved but whoever does not believe will not be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues. And he goes on to say, they will place their hands on people who are ill and they will get well. We saw that pattern throughout the life of Jesus. We saw it through the apostles. Um, church history tells us that we saw it all through the early church. Um, the church never lost healing, but it certainly uh, was difficult in some places at some times. I believe God is bringing healing back, um, has been over the last century or two, to his church as part of how we express God's love and good news to people. Paul, at the end of Romans, wrote, Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except that which Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey what I have said and done by the power of signs and wonders through the power of God, the spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Elysium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Full proclamation of the gospel is in word and deed. Those deeds are are very wide ranging, but they clearly include, according to the New Testament, healing. So why is healing so important? Just a reminder. Um, it's the nature of God. God's revealed nature, Jehovah Rapha, in Exodus 15. It's the nature of God to heal. And we, we heard last time, it's also what Jesus brought when he brought the kingdom of God, the now and the not yet of the kingdom of God. We know that Jesus went through Galilee um, in Matthew 4, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and illness amongst the people. And the news about him spread, it said, all over Syria. And people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, the paralyzed, and he healed them. So we know that Christ is the victorious one, but he's in a battle. The enemy, Satan, is not giving up. Uh, we looked at last time that, that it's Satan who sends sickness and disease m most of the time. There are a couple of biblical examples that are different, but God basically wants his people to be whole and healthy and healed. And he uses all things for good when we're sick, but he also commands us, his people, to heal. So we talked last time about how to do this. I just introduced this simple model I use called HEAL. What do we do? We hear from the person when, when, we, when somebody comes across us, however that might be, they come to us, we meet them, we see them, and we hear from the person and the Holy Spirit, what's the problem? We then exercise faith by praying, commanding or asking them, uh, asking the Holy Spirit to come and work. And then we ask the person what's happening. We, we also got our eyes open because we can see what uh, the Holy Spirit is doing. Uh, we pray again if needed uh, until either we've got the healing has come, um, the person has had enough, or, or this the Holy Spirit checks us. Um, and then we, whatever we do, we want to love people, affirm them, encourage them, and we give them resources, uh, point them to bits of the Bible, we might um, connect them to people, that there's an ongoing discipleship so people keep any healing they've had, and if they haven't, they're going away encouraged, pressing in, seeking more prayer. God always works. So let, let me give you an example of applying this simple model. Uh, a couple of days ago, I went uh, with one of the members of our church into Reading Town Centre. Um, we've been doing this for the last couple of weeks. 
outside Marks and Spencer's in Reading, which has been uh, rechristened by some people in the church, uh, Miracles and Salvation, uh, M&S. So anyway, we had a, we've got a couple of very simple signs up offering prayer. And um, also we just approach people, we talk to them, we tell them how much God loves them, etc. Uh, on Wednesday afternoon, uh, a Kenyan lady was passing through and uh, my uh, sister-in-law, actually, Bex, uh, got into conversation with her. It turns out this lovely lady, Margaret, had a bad back pain and arthritis and real pains in her, in her knee. She was having real trouble actually walking. So she, she, she asked me uh, to join in and said, well, could, could you pray? So, so we asked her how long she had it, what was it? Um, and she was, you know, how bad was the pain? Not to five, I think she was, uh, not to 10, she was about seven or eight. So, um, and she, she had to actually rest on um, a pillar because she it was too uncomfortable for her to stand up on her own. So we prayed for her. I just commanded um, all the pain to go. And I just spoke uh, peace over her. Um, asking the Holy Spirit just to come. Anyway, quick prayer. Had to ask her, and this is worth knowing, uh, Christians especially like to pray when they're being prayed for. Actually, it's better to just receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do. If somebody's praying for you, I encourage people that we all pray for them, just to receive from the Holy Spirit. Uh, so anyway, we prayed for her and asked her, well, she said it had got better. Um, she was almost, that was good enough. She was just so amazed and thankful. She was down to like a four. But we said, no, we can, let's pray again. So we prayed again um, for all the pain to go. And I sensed uh, as we were praying that, that, that there were other things going on inside her. I spoke and I prayed for those. I prayed for God's peace and shalom. Shalom is a really powerful way of praying because shalom is God's authority and God's divine order stilling those things that are wrong. Um, it's more than just peace. It's more than just the absence of problems. It's actually the bringing of the divine order into somebody's life. So we were praying peace. Um, we were praying shalom, praying all pain. Anyway, by the end of it, she said, well, all the pain had gone. She was like, she could not believe it. Um, and she was very grateful. And we inquired a bit more. And it turned out she was a Christian, she'd, but she'd st- for some reason, she'd stopped going to church. And so we would, we knew the church she went to. We just encouraged her to connect. Uh, I know the pastor. I said, pick him, pick up the phone to him. He'd love to hear from you. So we're just able to encourage her. Uh, and we, she was clear that, that it had been a divine, you know, God had set her up uh, to meet us. So we were just so encouraged by that. But, but you see how the simple prayer went, the simple mnemonic went. We hear from the person and the Holy Spirit. We exercise faith by praying. Um, we ask what's happening, we pray again as needed, and we love and we affirm and we encourage. So because people have got to hang on to their healing, it's part of discipleship, because God wants us to be whole in body, mind and spirit, not just uh, a pain go away. So just want to say a bit more about this pressing into healing. So when I first um, was praying for people, if somebody wasn't healed, you, you might pray again and then you might pray again. And then you go, well, I wonder why they're not being healed. And that might be the end of it. But but as time has gone on, I think I've learned more and more. Ah, particularly that bit about hearing from the Holy Spirit. Surprise, surprise. Um, there are some things we can do to really help um, more people uh, receive healing. So I just want to highlight two or three of those here, first of all. So the first is, is, is the importance of, of growing faith in people um, and, and in the body of people for what God is doing. And we do that through sharing testimony. And, uh, John in Revelation 19 verse 10 wrote, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I.e., When we hear about what Jesus has done, it releases the the, the prophetic potential for it to be done again. Um, so testimony is really important. So I encourage people always to share their testimony, to listen to testimonies. There, there are 
many sites where you can watch testimonies and listen to testimonies of what God has done. If you go on to Global Awakenings, they have uh, video and uh, written testimonies of the healing that have happened um, uh, across the world they've been involved in. If you listen to some of the podcasts um, that I've done, I'll give you a link to at the end, there are people's stories on there of healings. Um, so I encourage you to, to share testimony and encourage the sharing of testimony in, church, in, your, in your church with your people. If you've not seen many healings yet, you may have to um, draw on testimonies from other people. And I'm, I'm sharing testimonies uh, as we teach here as well. Um, but it really builds people up. Um, I found that I had so many stories to tell of how God was healing people with shoulders. I got to the stage, I had a, a faith that God would heal people with shoulders, whether there was a prompting from God or not. It's just like, if you've got a shoulder problem, I just know God heals those. And, and people would respond to that. Guess what? They'd get healed. Um, so I'd, I'd encourage testimony. Um, the other things that you often find get in the way of uh, healing when you're praying for people. Sometimes it's sin. And, and, and we just need to encourage one another that if there is sin in our lives, and God highlights sin, um, the Bible is really, really clear. And this verse in 1 John 1 makes it clear. Look, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Sin is sometimes behind sickness. But actually, to be honest, I don't often find it. Jesus is very clear um, that there isn't a correlation very often. Uh, lots of people who get ill, who suffer, there can be some of the most godly and holy people we know. So there isn't, don't expect uh, that sin is behind sickness. What is much more likely to find, and it is a form of sin, is unforgiveness. Probably 80% of the time when people aren't healed straight away, uh, unforgiveness is an issue. So I often, if prompted by the Holy Spirit, but I often might ask, look, is, is, there, is there something you're aware of where you're holding on forgiveness? Particularly if you're asking that question of a, of a Christian. Um, but again, Jesus was really, really clear that if we forgive people who sin against us, the Heavenly Father forgives us. But if we don't, oh my goodness, our sin isn't forgiven. And, and that's a dangerous place to go. Um, so people sometimes need help in working through forgiveness, but it's so important. I remember praying for a, a man in Chelmsford. I was following through the steps of the model. And we prayed for him. He, he came and he'd had uh, actually part of his chest muscle was all missing because it was ripped out from an accident that happened oh, over 20 years ago. Uh, when he slipped and he grabbed hold of um, a bar in, in the back of a van. And, and his muscles all ripped out. And, and, and it literally, you could see the muscle mass was missing. And we prayed and, and nothing happened. And I just kind of sensed, oh, have you forgiven yourself? And have you forgiven the people who left actually the floor of the van you went into had oil on it? Have you forgiven those people? He thought about it. He said, no, no, he hadn't. So we just pray. He was very, very keen to. So he forgave his work colleagues and then he forgave himself and so then i prayed again and when i prayed this time commanding uh all the pain and the commanding the muscles to regrow the muscles started to regrow in his, in his chest before me yes it was uh amazing um it took about 10 minutes but after 10 minutes 10 15 minutes his muscles were then equal across his chest. It was, um, so the creation of uh, new tissue before your eyes is what we would call a miracle. God's creative power at work. Um, a healing tends to be more where uh, you speed up a natural healing process or something else. So, what, so whether it was a natural healing process that was um, stopped or it was miraculous creation of tissue, I don't know, it, it was amazing. Um, and, and he was so thankful to God. But it, unforgiveness was what was blocking that healing. 
Uh, and we know people are whole people. Uh, Paul wrote at the end of 1 Thessalonians 5, he said, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless until the coming of the, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's not that the Bible teaches that we're separate parts. The Bible is very clear. We're whole people. But the, the Hebraic mindset was very much we are whole people, um, body, mind and, and, and uh, spirit. And uh, it's not the one is good and one is bad. The, the Greek dualistic thinking that says spirit good, body bad is not biblical. Um, but what I just want to pull out is that, that Paul's kind of pointing out there are within the whole, there are the different elements and, and healing, uh, physical healing, uh, as we say, may often have a, a spiritual root like unforgiveness, but it could also have emotional issues that need to be dealt with or even um, the presence of uh, demonic spirits. Uh, so people might need deliverance. Um, and again, if you read the New Testament, you'll find all the time these issues uh, going on where Jesus um, had to deal with the demonic spirit in order to release healing. So in Luke, for instance, uh, one of the occasions he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, there was a, a woman uh, who was uh, crippled uh, and they were all watching because they didn't, <laughs> the religious people didn't want him to heal on the Sabbath. And Jesus, um, it says, rebuked the evil spirit and she stood up straight and was set free. I remember Jesus taught and he said, look, you'd look after your animals on the Sabbath. For goodness sake, God the Father cares for his children so much more so. So there is a relationship. I remember a lady who came to a, a meeting in North London who was suffering really badly with fibromyalgia, with, with pain all over her body, and couldn't sleep, um, a, a real problem. And she, and she had terrible vertigo. Well, um, when those sorts of things are going on, you kind of know, oh, this is like to be complex. Okay. So as we pray, it's a bit like kind of layers of an onion skin being complex. So you go back in and there's various things and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you as to what are the things where there's a mixture of she needs to forgive people. Um, there'll be abuse involved. Um, there'll be things that happen to her, curses spoken. Um, and um, the enemy had got in there. So uh, we'll talk another day about deliverance in detail, but basically you need to just deal with the issues um, as the Holy Spirit leads in line with the Bible, forgiveness, uh, speaking healing into these issues, etc. Shutting the doors, as it were, and then you tell the enemy to get lost, cast it out in the name of Jesus. Uh, and when you dealt, we dealt with these inner healing and deliverance issues, guess what? All the physical healing problems, the physical problems that could be tested there and then have gone. So we're whole people. God deals with us as whole people. So I did say I was going to talk about words of knowledge. Um, so and I want to share about this. I'm excited to teach about words of knowledge because every time I teach about words of knowledge, people listening who've never had words of knowledge get words of knowledge and people get healed. Uh, I've never done the teaching and heard had people listen to it by video and then put it into practice but i'm trusting that that's what you will do um, because the holy spirit is not limited by us not being in the same room or even listening to this at the same time so what are what are words of knowledge so words of knowledge are supernatural revelations of information by the holy spirit uh, paul wrote in 1 corinthians 12 about the gifts the the, the charisms given to the church the body of christ um, and he talked about a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous powers they're all given that the body might be built up and um actually when you when you study them you also see that they pair up so discernment and prophecy or tongues and interpretation but words of knowledge and healing often often pair up. Now you can get words of knowledge not just in the realm of healing but um, I want to talk particularly in the realm of, of healing. So, so a word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation of information that you couldn't know otherwise by the Holy Spirit. Like it might be the Holy Spirit prompting me to pray about 
something specific in some of the examples I've given before. It, it, it's a kind of rhema, now word of God, but, but actually the, 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 wor the, the, the word of knowledge may be bringing a, a logos scripture to life. Okay? Um, we can overplay the logos rhema difference. So, so what the Holy Spirit is doing when he brings word of knowledge is to kind of prepare the way, to signal what he wants to do, to create the power and encourage faith in uh, hearers for healing. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, our Sunday morning in church, we were giving words of, uh, well, I gave a word of knowledge. I remember I had a, a pain in my shoulder. I'll talk in a minute about how you get words of knowledge pain in my shoulder that wasn't mine. I gave out and said, look, pain in my shoulder, anybody pain in my shoulder, I believe God wants to heal you. A chap came up called Richard. Richard, it turned out, had had a uh, shoulder replacement uh, surgery 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago, something like that, by uh, an orthopedic surgeon in Reading, famous orthopedic red surgeon in Reading called Stephen Copeland. It was called the since the operation was called the Copeland shoulder. Anyway, gave him, it was now pretty old and it, it was very painful in shoulder and he had restricted movement. Anyway, I prayed, used the model, um, and the pain went and he got movement back that he'd never had before. And he, he could do things with his, with his arm and his shoulder he couldn't do before. Um, he was uh, so excited, he went home and he built a shed and he did the shoulder in. So he came back the next Sunday, we prayed for him, got healed again. Interesting thing with Richard is that he's an archer. And over time, he um, was able to, to, to measure that his shoulder was getting stronger and stronger and stronger, like it had never been before. So there was a, a healing there and then of the pain and something released, but then a strengthening and a building up over time. So that's, that's something of the power of words of knowledge. Uh, as example, a good example with Jesus, when um, he there was a paralyzed man who, who was brought by his four friends and the famous Sunday school story, famous Bible story, it's amazing. He, they dropped him down through the roof uh, as Jesus was teaching. And um, it says, uh, Jesus forgave his sins and then all the religious people well the people were thinking who on earth is this and it says immediately Jesus knew in his spirit look, um, that this is what they were thinking in their hearts i.e who on earth is this and then he goes on and he says so that you might know I've got authority to forgive sins pick up your mat and walk and the guy picked up his mat and walked showing oh my goodness this Jesus has power to forgive sins and he has the power to heal. And as you know, reading your Gospels, he's given that to us, to you and me, as his followers. So, what's a word of knowledge? What, what, why is it so important? Well, it's like blind Bartimaeus. If In Mark 10, it says, um, as Jesus and his disciples were coming along, there was a big crowd um, and uh, they were leaving the city and a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Uh, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of God, David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet, came to Jesus. What do you want to do for me? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. Do you see Jesus asking questions? Listen to him. Rabbi, I want to see. Not everybody wants to be healed. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Now, a word of knowledge is like Jesus calling to you to say, he's calling you. He's calling you. God is calling you. He was signaling that he wants to heal you. He wants to heal you. There's a cooperation. Why on earth use words of knowledge? Because I think God, the Holy Spirit, God wants us to cooperate. We've got to hear from him and receive words of knowledge, but people have still got to respond and say, yes, I want to be healed. That's me. So 
if you hear somebody give out a word of knowledge and it's you or it could be you please respond where churches really get this even as the word of knowledge is given people respond and people get healed just hearing it don't even need to pray don't even need to pray I was uh, preaching in a lovely Anglican church in Reading, St. Matthew's, uh, a few months ago. And we taught on words of knowledge and uh, how we could get them. And um, then we asked the congregation, uh, anybody who's never had a word of knowledge, got a word of knowledge. Uh, and it was amazing because there was a, a lady, she, she said beforehand to me that she had learning difficulties. So she... She had learning difficulties, um, just a lovely lady. She stood up and she said, I think I've got one of those things you're talking about, on stuff, those word of knowledge things. Um, I've got funny tummy, like funny tummy. And I was like, oh my goodness, what's this? So I asked, well, anybody got, and there were two, a couple of people who said, yeah, I've got funny tummy. Um, and one man stood up uh, and he was, uh, the vicar told me afterwards, he's, a, he's an engineer. Um, and he's the sort of very practical matter of fact the last person in the world who would say something's happened when it hasn't and he's and, he, and the guy stood up and he said when you said that and i stood up immediately it's gone i had funny tummy before i really and it's all gone i'm i'm healed and he was like gobsmacked and and you could see everybody was going oh my goodness and there were other words of knowledge given there by people who've never given them before. People responded, and without me even praying, they were healed. And we prayed, and people healed, and then some people came up for a ministry team later, and they were healed. So, so both in giving and receiving words of knowledge, we have to exercise faith, which is spelled R-I-S-K, risk. I encourage you to go for it. So how might you receive a word of knowledge? Well, there are, there are seven ways generally i think you could you could you could um receive words of knowledge um, you can feel it this is the main way i um receive words of knowledge pain or sensation in a part of your body i've told you about richard before um uh, that's a sensation that that lady shared at st matthew's would be an example of that one that's always kind of a bit ooh for me was I was at a conference in Southampton um, and uh, ministry, part of the ministry team at the end and we were asked to stand up and give a word of knowledge and we asked God for a word of knowledge and I had really bad nipple pain I don't ever have nipple pain and I thought oh this is embarrassing anyway I said that and a lady came up to me uh, in the prayer line at the end and she said I've got really bad nipple pain. She said, I've had breast cancer, I've had an operation, um, cancer's all gone, it's all, everything's clear, but I've got nipple pain. And I, she said, I was talking to my husband this morning, everything's okay, but why is this nipple pain there? And you just had that word anyway. I prayed for her and all the pain went. And she just knew, God loved her. And I was just so blessed. But it, it was a bit of a risk really, because it was embarrassing. So. Pain or sensation in your body that's not yours, sometimes it's very fleeting. Try it. Give that as a word of knowledge. When we give words of knowledge, um, do it with humility. So I always say, I might be wrong, but I think this may be God. Somebody got a pain here or whatever. So, so don't worry, have a go for it. You could get it wrong sometimes, somebody comes to prayer and God still heals them. Um, so it could be an impression, uh, uh, so you sense it, it's, a, it's an impression. I was on a Zoom call the other day with a church, um, I was just part of the support team, and I had this, as we were praying, I kind of became aware that the door behind me was opened. I thought, well, that's, that's weird. And, and in my head just went straight to Luke uh, 10, where Jesus talked about um, asking and seeking and knocking, the door will be opened. So I was thinking, ah, oh, so I had this Bible verse ready and, I, and then as we were on the Zoom, I kind of had this impression that there was a particular name of a, of a lady that it should apply to. So I said, um, 
well I've got this name and this and this lady just burst out because she'd said I've been praying all week that God would see me that somebody I've been calling out I've been seeking I've been knocking I've been knocking I've been knocking and then she this bible verse comes and so, so it wasn't I think maybe it was emotional healing but it really encouraged her um it could be a picture you could you so you could hear it some people hear it I don't you see it, it could be a picture of a word or a part of a body uh, you could speak it comes out of your mouth without you being aware of it. You could have a vision um, or you could dream it. Uh, I had a dream once, uh, I saw somebody uh, and I saw her back and I saw like a cash register come out of her back. I thought this is really, I was trying to make it work out what on earth is meant prophetically. And then I saw her the next day and she had really bad pain in her back and we prayed for it <laughs> and it was healed. So I encourage you to press into God for words of knowledge they can come to you they can come in a church service they can come in a ministry but it can happen on the bus it can happen when you're walking along if you if you get a sense or an impression it could be one of these things just be aware and and you might meet somebody and you go do you by any chance have a pain xyz and you'd be amazed what happens and actually sometimes you say no but they you still have some amazing encounter with them but sometimes they do and, and healing comes. So, seven main ways that you can receive a word of knowledge. I'm going to pray for you now that you would learn to, to walk in this, to receive this gift of words of knowledge that can go with healing, can turbocharge you into healing. I'd encourage you when you have a meeting, it could be on the, it could be a group meeting on Zoom in a small group or in your church when you're back face to face I encourage you to ask for words of knowledge to be revealed so let's pray holy spirit i ask now that all those listening to this if they've never received this gift before lord i pray that by your holy spirit you would impart the gift of words of knowledge you would impart gifts of healing in the name of jesus that your body might learn what it is to minister to one another, but also to minister to those outside the church, to bring healing and love, the proclamation of your kingdom in word and deed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you found that helpful and encouraging. Um, there are resources. There's more in the book that I've written. We all get to play. Uh, growing a culture and practice of healing in the local church. As I said, lots of encouraging testimonies in the podcast series. Uh, series that series one, series two will be coming out shortly. And uh, happy to answer any questions. Um, if that would help, please do get in contact with me. May God bless you and uh, lead you as you go forward in the healing ministry in your lives and in your church. Amen.